Hi everyone, this is video number 14 of the Regents Chemistry curriculum and our topic for today is going to be gases. Uh, by the end of this video you should be able to predict the behavior of gases when pressure, volume or temperature are changed. Okay, here are some uh, statements. Determine whether the following statements are true or false. If you don't know the answer to this, to these statements, it's okay. Uh, you should be able to answer them by the end of this video. All right. So gases, there are uh, a few gases on a periodic table. Uh, nice way to remember what the gases are on the periodic table. Remember that hydrogen likes to have fon, F-O-N, with chlorine and group 18. Okay. So at standard temperature and standard pressure, these are the gases that are present on the periodic table. Also know that gases tend to have very high entropy, okay, meaning they have a very high uh, or very random arrangement of particles. So if you were to put a gas inside any container, the gas will be, particles will be very randomly arranged, okay. And also you should know that uh, gas particles have a, an indefinite shape they have an indefinite shape and they have an indefinite volume. So it doesn't matter what size container you have, the gas particles will take the shape of that container and uh, they, uh, their volume will be different depending on the size of the container. Okay, so now uh, what happens if we change the pressure uh, volume or temperature on gases. You should know that there's only one indirect relationship between those three. And the indirect relationship is represented here by this graph. If you increase the pressure, you decrease the volume. All the other relationships are direct. So Boyle's law tells us that the product, the initial, the product of the pressure and the volume when you multiply pressure by volume, when you multiply the initial pressure by the initial volume of a gas, your product is going to have to be equal to your final pressure multiplied by your final volume of the gas. Okay, so let's say for example you had a gas, you had five milliliters of a gas at STP. Okay. And you increased the pressure on that gas to three atmosphere. And my question for you now is what is the final volume of this gas? What will be your V2? So first thing is what is STP? STP is standard temperature and standard pressure. If we look at table B of the reference tables, uh, sorry, table A of the reference tables, here's your standard temperature, 273 degrees Kelvin, and here's your standard pressure, 1 atm. So going back to that question, my uh, standard temperature and standard pressure. I have five milliliters. Notice here, I did not change the temperature. We didn't say anything about the temperature. So we can take the temperature out of this completely. So now we're only dealing with initial volume and initial pressure. Initial pressure is standard, which makes it one ATM according to table A. Initial volume is 5 milliliters. Now my final pressure was given to me in the question as 3 atm and my final volume is unknown. Simply just perform the calculations here and you'll get 5 equals to 3 v2. Divide both sides by 3 and your volume would be 5 over 3 
your final volume would be 5 over 3 milliliters. Okay? You don't have to memorize that the product of the initial pressure and volume equals the product the, the product of the final pressure and volume because if you look at table T which is the last table in the reference tables you'll see the combined gas law which states that the initial pressure multiplied by the initial volume divided by the initial temperature shall always equal to the final pressure multiplied by the final volume divided by the final temperature. Okay, so anytime you're asked about the volume of a gas, the pressure of a gas, or the temperature of a gas, you want to refer back to this law. And as I said earlier, since the temperature did not change, I did not have to include the temperature in this formula or in this equation. Okay. So here's a little bit more about Charles Law. Charles Law is a, uh, states that the temperature is directly proportional to the volume. If you increase the temperature, the kinetic energy of the particles will increase, causing the causing them to move faster and occupy more space eventually. So if you have a uh, liquid in a container and you increase the temperature on that liquid, eventually the liquid particles are going to change into a gas and occupy more space. Okay. Similarly, uh, the relationship according to gay lussacs the relationship between temperature and pressure is also uh, direct and will be represented on a graph like this. Okay. Next, the kinetic molecular theory. And uh, according to the kinetic molecular theory, uh, ideal gases have no attraction between their particles. So it's the three no-nos theory. I call it the three no-nos uh, and the random arrangement. So first no-no is uh, no attraction between gas particles. Gas particles occupy a negligible volume, no volume. Uh, and thirdly, no net energy is lost or gained upon collision between the particles, which means that all collisions are elastic. So if you have two gas particles here, if one was moving at five miles an hour and one was standing still, then eventually when they collide, this particle will move at five miles an hour and this particle will take its place and stand still. So the energy is not lost, it is not gained, it is only transferred. Next, uh, particles will move in random, constant straight line motion. You can make any real gas behave like an ideal gas all you have to do is think of beach conditions. When you go to the beach, you want a high temperature, so you'll increase the temperature, and you want low pressure, so you decrease the pressure. Increase the temperature, decrease the pressure, will give you beach conditions. With that said, this is pretty much all you need to know about gases. We talked about their solubility uh, before, and when we talked about solutions, uh, as a refresher, just remember that if you try to dissolve a gas, in water, you want to decrease the temperature of water and you also want to increase the pressure on that gas. Force the particles to get in the water. Decrease the temperature, increase the pressure to increase the solubility of a gas in water. Okay, so next video coming up we're going to talk about acids and bases we've got a few more videos and we're done with the curriculum let's go back to the questions here they are read the following statements determine whether they're true or false and that's pretty much it